Hello, and welcome to our review of Eating Out, the 2004 gay comedy film by Aristical Entertainment. I'm David, and I'll be joined today by Robert, who watched the film with me. So before we get started, this is a s farce. They use the F word very liberally, and they also make a lot of casual jokes about sexual assault. So there's your content warning. We'll have an uncensored version on the Patreon, but if that stuff's going to bother you, please don't watch. So without further ado, let's wear out our Walkmans, frost our tips, and party like it's 2004. Look at that feathered hair. <laughs> our heroes are roommates and students, Caleb and Kyle and these other roommates and students, Gwen and Mark. Kyle likes Mark. I've been stalking him for years. You decide to be gay for one night. Mark likes Caleb. Oh, oh sorry. I'm, <laughs> I'm totally drunk. Caleb likes Gwen. Did you want me to make you a drink? Gwen also likes Caleb. It's, it's pretty weird. But only because Caleb is pretending to be so... gay with Mark. Sure. So the cold open scene before the opening credits involves Caleb with his girlfriend, the one with the fetish. You like that, huh? Please. Hold still. Please. Stop. This isn't funny. Stop. But this is a funny scene because there's a fart. <laughs> so the girl says he's not bad enough for him and dumps him. I need a little shake and bake in my life. I need to feel dirty. Because she's got a Jetta. Whatever that means. Leave, I got a Jetta. Caleb, feeling down, vents to his roommate Kyle, who then tells him that girls are super attracted to gay guys. Straight girls love gay boys. I could get any girl I wanted. Shut the fuck. Serial killer. Which is the central lie that is the only thing that makes this movie work. If you believe this lie, the movie's great. Then they say a whole bunch of misogynistic stuff about cheerleaders. Why is it that every woman they've gone for is in the cheer squad? Cheerleaders are desirable and popular because they are empty. <laughs> they are pretty and vacant. It means they're a vessel to be filled. <laughs> the perfect woman. Disclaimer, I don't believe that. <laughs> Next, we meet Gwen, who's in a relationship with an effeminate man. I love you, bunny cakes. And I love you, ginger butt. <laughs> I think she just calls him ginger butt. Yeah, well, because his ass hairs are red, which, well, she would know about because I'm sure they do all together. And in the very next scene, he breaks up with her at a party because, uh, because he's gay. I think I might be gay. I turned another one. Gwen takes it very personally for being the one with the gay fetish. I don't know what she expected was gonna happen. Like, whatever. It's not meant to make sense. I was good enough for you last night, you fucking f I mean, not being very positive about this. I couldn't be any more positive if I was gay in a repository bin at the needle exchange. Just remember that you've eaten pussy. So the main characters brush elbows for a bit at the party. Your shoes had me fooled. Huh? So those are non-gay <laughs> shoes. Those are straight shoes that we saw there. Yeah. And then Caleb stumbles into ending up on a date with Mark. So. <laughs> you stole my boyfriend. Gwen does what any supportive roommate would do for a first date and has them make out in front of her. Kiss. I think two guys kissing is so hot. This yeah, is supposed on their to be first a roommate date. on the first date. Kiss my grandma like that in her coffin. Well, if he doesn't want this is where I need my popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hungry. Yeah. I'm suddenly very hungry. Robert and I thought that scene was very deep and artistic and full of poignancy. Um, and frankly, if you don't get it, you're never gonna get it. Sorry, I'm not gonna say. Next, they go on a lunch date with a couple music friends of Mark's. They even do this thing with dueling pianos. It's very cute. You, you should see it. <laughs> what the? <laughs> this is the that first one date, cut by the way. Hands. Yeah, I'll just say. <laughs> the more I watch this, the more I really feel like I'm in the early 2000s. <laughs> we had to play it all to ourselves. Oh, that's exactly what he just said. Let's mash our biceps together. <laughs> uh, the date goes on, and then what follows is probably the cringiest sex scene I have ever seen. This 
This barely makes sense, but I'm going to try to describe it. Mark and Caleb are feeling awkward during their date. Gwen calls them and can tell that things are awkward, so she gets on the phone with Caleb to talk dirty to him, while Mark just sits there. Until eventually Mark makes moves on Caleb, and Caleb's horny enough with Gwen on the phone that he just lets it happen. I'm gonna finger myself and you pretend I'm telling you about taxes. You like that? Yeah. As far as she's aware, mm -hmm. this is like all she really wants. This is her fantasy. Yeah, gay men. We have a beach. So Caleb finishes and then Mark does what any self-respecting gay man would do and asserts dominance on his couch. I can take care of myself. Just sit there. Aw. Oh no. Oh no. Have you ever jerked off next to somebody who's just sitting around? It's not fun. It's not pleasurable. It's really bad. <laughs> this is so awkward. These sounds. I love how it's like squishing sounds even though there's no lube used. And after that, Caleb leaves Mark alone in his apartment. And Flex. Okay, you can breathe now. So for whatever reason, this film is full of pop culture references and music references. So here's a bunch of them and uh, a bunch of mine and Robert's as we were watching the film. My life is so not having sex in the city right now. Look, let's get a Sofia Coppola thing straight here. Being gay is more than listening to good music and eating low fat foods. Can you list any tracks from Madonna's Like a Prayer album? Um, Express Yourself, Cherish. Cute, but a total Meredith Brooks hit single. That girl is a prefab sprout B-side. That sounds etch a sketchy to me. Oof, oh, that sent a shiver through me. <laughs> this party's gonna be more fun than a slinky. Oh, father. Vogue. No, honey, Vogue was on Dick Tracy. Program spelled Beethoven, B-E-A-T. <laughs> <laughs> I love music and potato salad on my face. You should have seen him. He flew out here like a seminal meatloaf album. There it is. Wow. Absolutely. We met before, don't you REM member? <laughs> God, I'm so angry I could smashing pumpkins. <laughs> I really cherish our relationship. Who did you invite? Like they said to Anne Frank, why don't you answer the door and find out? And why does her hair look like that? Oh my God. She looks like Cynthia from the Rugrats. She looks like the COVID virus. <laughs> I don't think I can handle it. Molly Ringwald, Anthony Michael Hall, let's be friends speech. I'm straight. You too? <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me you like to kiss. That was a band. Yeah, you no. said, do you, do you like to kiss? Oh, you too kiss? No, kiss. Kiss is a band, Robert. Oh, oh, oh fine. Straight people oh. like kiss. He's about to enter Sandman. <laughs> so the next day they make some dinner plans. I'm sorry, I just have so many sexy problems. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, as your roommate, I think it would just be really fun and responsible if you, me, and the guy you're lying to could just have a threesome. Thanks. <laughs> We're just two friends who care about each other and kiss platonically. <laughs> we have sexy problems. Kyle, I'm sorry. It... Fuck you. Yeah, the only reasonable character in the movie. Right, finally, some <laughs> logical motivation. We go to a dinner scene where everyone will take turns being cringy and comically confused. Big, fat sausages. Just wanted to have dinner, no interior motive. Ulterior. I knew that. We also meet Caleb's family, a purple family, which Robert and I found hilarious. That's why they came over there like, we see you've been wearing green. Yeah. We're bringing you back home. You've changed. <laughs> How could you have done this to us? We're a purple family. We all look like Barneys and you will too. Was it something we said? Was it how we raised you? Did we tell you we love you too many times? So how did you meet each other? Was it across a crowded room? It's how me and your father met. We was on opposite <laughs> ends of Tiananmen Square. He was wearing purple. I, I was, was wearing, wearing purple. purple. I do give this movie some credit for having other characters acknowledge how cringy and mean both the younger sister and Gwen are being in these scenes. Kyle's like a second son to us. Or daughter. You're a reality show without a camera crew. Mr. and Mrs. Peterson, your son is gay. 
Hear it. Love you, game bro. And Gwen doesn't stop after the family leaves. She basically just attacks Kyle's appearance for two minutes after they're gone because Kyle isn't in Mark's league. You are not in Mark's league. I mean, you're not a total canine, but you are a K5. Gwen, come off it. So by the very, very end, it's revealed that Caleb was faking his gayness to get to Gwen, which Gwen finds very flattering. It also turns out that Kyle was, no, sorry, Mark was actually attracted to Kyle, but was playing coy. Hmm? Hey, someday I'll look back on all this and think it was really hot. <laughs> <laughs> what a line. So it turns out classical and jazz can get along. <clears throat> That's oh, it. That was the end of it. Oh. What a crowd pleaser. So Robert, what'd you think? I think we should talk about what we didn't expect. So like okay. I expected camp. I expected bad acting. I expected poor writing. I expected like average production value. Um, what I did not expect was like, the overt need to pornify it from all the like direction. It was great. He could have just said that was that was great, but he's like, it's great. It's so good. Oh, here comes the porn music. Ugh, I'm exhausted. Time to sleep in my pants. I didn't expect to really like one of the actors. Which one? The gay guy. <laughs> wow, David, that was ninety percent of the cast. I think you're the, referring the classical, to the, the classical main... music guy. Oh, you liked him? Why? Yeah, I mean, I just think he's cute. Ah, they all have such nice arms on the walls. Oh, I didn't even see them. I was looking is... at arms. <laughs> and I like the straight guy. I like green shirt guy. Usually, like L.A. style, just like muscle boy, pretty boy, like is not typically oh, okay. my type. Okay. If they look like a Ken doll, right? If they're so attractive, exactly. it's annoying. I, I can't stand that. And exactly. so the straight guy to me was like, he is toned, but he's not overly jacked. He is like, he's like handsome, like, you know, classically handsome, but he's not like a Matt Bomber. That's mm -hmm. too much for me. So then I was just like, yeah. he's just good looking. I do know why I do it. It's, it sounds stupid. But I'm a stupid person. <laughs> Don't you know? That's almost sexy person problem number one, yeah. being stupid. So yeah, so this is a very, very, very white movie. <laughs> it was oh, yeah. only white people, I think. I, um, which I wasn't other, thinking about. Other than the one mother, I think she was a mother, the Asian mm. woman who had zero lines and just emoted the entire yeah. time, I think there was an entirely white cast. Yeah. Did he eat something? I just did. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, when did he start chewing? <laughs> how'd you how'd you feel about the um the casual like ish stuff <laughs> that was going on? This girl upstairs has all these guys over and makes them pretend to I had never watched a movie where it was treated as a joke, I guess. <laughs> yeah, see that's the thing, is I think entering into a film like this, you're gonna think it's gonna be really camp and silly and funny. She did express that she's like, you're not bad enough for me. I waited 24 days to have sex with you. Well, I didn't want to seem like a slut. <laughs> Tiffany. So it was just like, yeah. it was almost like this, it's just like, I didn't consent one way or another, but like I went with it because I'm into bad boys. So I was just like, where's, yeah. where's the I education in this? You know? I love criminals. Criminals are hot. Yeah. Yeah. I just didn't, and, and, and yeah. mind you, that is also- Psychotic. And it is a more modern, film topic concern and also i think of something higher budget not to say that they should be excused being a lower budget production to not like set standards but when like those two female characters like one of them is crazy and has a fetish and the other is kind of crazy and has like and has a gay fetish yeah <laughs> like and a turning of gays fetish. I don't know. That's like a little, that's a little misogynistic, I guess. Yeah, because that's what we need more of in, in film. We need more fetishizing. Ooh. It's just like, yeah. Did they make the film that they wanted to see in the world? Probably. <laughs> How about the like unexpected poor lighting? <laughs> oh my God. There's so every, many. Like every single scene. <laughs> so many harsh shadows where I was just like. Yeah. 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 Like that dinner scene. Where it's like all, like everybody's just like, <laughs> just like <laughs> from right above them.
<laughs> and they still look incredible. <laughs> I am so fucking hot, even though I have these harsh, harsh shadows. Yeah, I mean, because so a lot of that is because it's a it's like the early digital look, which is just like this weirdly interlaced. Like this is a transfer from somebody's DVD. High definition and compressed to DVD quality. Oh What's with wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> what happened over here? I don't know. Tor. Tor. <laughs> and now just to give you a sense of how strange the dialogue is in this movie, here's a bunch of lines that I didn't know what to do with, but are just too good to erase. Bastard! Nobody's futile as drug testing at the gay games. Maybe they'd lighten up if I told them I was into orgiastic splendor. <laughs> orgiastic splinter. <laughs> Sounds like an adult version of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Orgiastic splendor party. Orgiastic splendor party. They put me in her dead grandma's room. It's really creepy in here. Uh, we thought you'd be back by now. I'm also a flautist. <laughs> Just eat less beans. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Give me a hug. Love you, gay bro. Sorry, you weird gay man. Not everybody likes eating sausage for dinner. I love it. You're so weird. So at the start, I said this was a review, but how does one really review eating out? It straddles the line between so bad it's good and so bad it's bad. So if this looked interesting, I would just recommend that you watch it yourself. Go ahead and rent the movie on Aristical Entertainment, their website, um, and support queer content as always. Thank you so much for watching. I'm now going to bleach my eyes after looking at all that interlaced video of man meat. <laughs>we're gonna try watching the other movies so if you like this leave a like if you loved it please subscribe and consider checking out patreon.com slash bitbutton where i'll have the uncensored version of this video and other behind the scenes stuff and i will see you soon Bye bye